So, some of you may have noticed recently that Masterlock, the wonderful combination padlock dial manufacturer, has a new little piece of marketing in their packaging materials featuring, quote, anti-shim protection. Externally, these locks look the same as the ones that we've seen on hardware store shelves for years, but inside, that retaining notch, that bar, which is usually so easily shimmed out of the way, is clearly a different shape. It has some extra curvature, some extra zigs and zags, and is, of course, much, much thinner. What this means is that it's a lot harder to use the typical beer can shim or properly store-bought butterfly shim from a locksmith supply catalog. The technique that I like, the technique of going in from the outside, wrapping around, turning around, that's going to jam up really hard. The only way to get in with a shim, and here we are making a homemade beer can shim, or Mexican fruit nectar shim, as the case may be in this instance, the only way to get in is to come down from above on the inside of the shackle surface. Now, this is not the customary technique we often teach in lockpick villages and our other hands-on trainings, so it's a totally different feel. But if you can craft a pretty decent shim, if you make it strong, make it out of nice proper metal, and if you wiggle the shackle up and down, the idea is to get the shim to keep nestling more and more deep with each downward wiggle of the shackle. But try not to let the shim pop back up with every upward wiggle of the shackle. Here's one other thing I started doing to make this a little more possible. The very tip of the shim, I would crunch over into a little bit of a curve. Now that's of course the last thing you usually want to do. You don't want your shim all crumpled up. And when you slap it back here, that crumple is going to kind of go away. But the, the seed has been planted. And if you keep trying to twist it in, don't twist side to side too much. It's really it's an up, down, up, down. You can't see very well around my hands here, but there you go. It got sunk in. It was able to get that bar out of the way. It chewed the hell out of the shim. You're not going to be using that again. Uh, in the past, of course, you guys may have seen that you can shim some of these locks open and the shim is ready to go again for another attempt. Not the case with an anti-shim padlock. It really is a harder mechanism to defeat. But ultimately, still just a spring-loaded latch catch. This is not a double ball padlock. This is not what I would call a shim-proof padlock. But it was harder. And I'm not going to lie, as you can see there, it was not my first attempt that actually got the lock open. I'm not trying to look cooler than I am. And here, just to prove it to you, I mean, this is footage of what I tried first. It took me a while of experimenting, trying to really figure out how far in do I have to press before I start trying to wiggle, whether or not there should be any turning involved. Definitely stay away from the side-to-side -side turning. It, it will do nothing for you. It'll just rip the shim to pieces. But yeah, if you're persistent and if you know what you're doing, especially if this is locked to a surface, it's going to make that in-out, in-out kind of wiggle a lot more effective. You'll eventually get there. Ask the people on our Black Hat training course from Black Hat Vegas this summer. It took us, uh, you know, a few seconds. I actually did it on the first try. Most of that was luck, but as you can see, there is a technique to it. Don't go side to side, give it the up, down, up, down, and eventually it'll sink its way in on that inside surface. Try it. Trust me, you'll be able to get in there.